Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Vapo. I'm going to be trying something completely new today. I've never done one of these before. I will be casting a StarCraft 2 pro level game. Now, I did do a lot of League of Legends in the past and I quite enjoyed doing it, but then I kind of stopped playing League of Legends for a while, so I decided to, you know, give this a go since I'm playing this quite a lot now. And who knows, maybe it'll work out quite well for me. So, on the top right hand side, you are here seeing here on Central Protocol, we have Solar. Now, Solar, just a bit of background history, he is currently on Team Samsung Galaxy. He is Korean and the last thing he has actually won was um, 2015 DreamHack Open Stockholm and he won $10,000 there. Now, on the top left hand side, we've got Parting who says it's, he's from Daisy, but he's actually on Team Yo Flash Wolf. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, he is also Korean and the last thing he has won was DreamHack Open Tours. This game is actually the first of the championship from DreamHack Rokat Legacy of the Void Championship. So basically, this is the very, very final between the two. So, as you can see here, both of them beginning with a very early starting point. There is a probe on the way just to do an early scouting. This is something you definitely want to do uh, as, as pretty much anything against Zerg, just in case you get one of those sneaky, sneaky 14 or 12 even pools, uh, which I have to admit I have been caught by <laughs> myself a few times. So just a bit of background about myself as well, just to, to mention, I am currently playing ranked games as well. And um, I am uh, currently in the Platinum League, so slowly progressing through that, not too high, I'm by no means pro at all of course, uh, Platinum is probably somewhere right in the middle there, maybe it's slightly above average since most people are probably stuck in Gold League, since it took me quite a while to get out of that. So here we go, we've got a spawning pool now, if you notice the timing of that was probably about 17 um, resources or supply, which I didn't actually look at unfortunately. Um, you are going to have to catch, uh, bear with me if, for a few games while I do catch up. Um, and uh, pretty much adjust myself to casting StarCraft 2 games. So we have got an early Nexus and an early uh, Hatchery on both sides. There's going to be very little aggression uh, from the beginning of this match. Now pretty standard here, one small opening for the Protoss. They're going to probably try to block that off with either a Zealot or a um, Oracle. Now we have the probe here blocking. The, the interesting thing about Central Protocol that I find when particularly playing it myself is the actual choke points are absolutely massive. Like if you look at this, it's very hard to block it off with, you know, like a, a one building and two supply depots like it would be on, on the tighter ramps. Um, it, they're, they're just huge chokes and I find it quite an interesting map, uh, particularly playing against Zerg. I think it's very difficult to play against Zerg here. Now we do have the pro coming down here and he is just about going to scout off this. It's pretty lucky that he did notice this. He's going to straight away see, oh well, I'm seeing a third hatch. That means that the Zerg is not going to play very aggressively. They're going to be trying to macro up Solar that is in this case. So as you can see straight away we've got two uh, Adepts rather, not Oracles, sorry I did call them Oracles earlier on. Two Adepts going out straight away, uh, doing a bit of aggression, and this is going to be pretty much the Protoss's force uh, or focus in this game because uh, of the fact that he saw the third hatchery. There, he's going to want to basically not let this Zerg take advantage of the additional economy that they are getting. So, uh, just to note though, uh, Adepts did two shot Zerglings, so it's definitely a bit risky for the Zerglings to be hanging around here, uh, particularly the fact that there you go, one got taken out. That's a free kill for the Adepts, uh, and again, they're going to lose uh, another. Uh, Zergling. So we have got almost a fully saturated natural base here on the Protoss side. Uh, we do have a bit of poking going on with the Zerglings. They're not really going to get much done here with two Adepts, actually four Adepts even on the field at the moment. It's going to be quite good for defending up against uh, basic Zergling rushes. Now, saying that, oh, free uh, probe kill here. That's pretty handy for the Zergling. Definitely worth 25 versus 50. Um, Again, poking up to see what's going on. Did you see the gateway coming up here? We've currently got, um, and I, again, you're going to have to bear with me while I, I get used to the building. Active forces we have here on A, and we have spending, economy, production. So we have got actually an immortal on the way as well. It's a bit strange considering he did not see any roaches. Now, there you go. We have a thing on the map showing that there is a warp prism being loaded up. This is quite interesting. Going to be doing a bit of harass play. Most likely going to be spotted by this overlord, but I'm guessing that um, that, you know, being adept, he actually ended up revealing it here as well. So maybe not the greatest of moves because now um, of course the uh, solar is going to be ready for this drop-off. 
So here we go, we're pretty much not going to let them land at all, otherwise they're just going to end up getting killed. Or at least damaged, of course, there's a good micro play here from Parting. He's just going to end up preventing any damage from being taken. And as soon as one got, starts to take any damage, he just loads them up and flies on away. So the third base from the, the Zerg almost fully saturated. It does look like he's going for something quite gas heavy. If you look, he has taken a total of five Vespian geysers at this time. He's building a bunch of drones. So you can see that he's definitely building for the long run in this matchup. Um, and uh, the Protoss player, it does appear like he's building quite a lot of units as well. Let's count how many gateways we've got. One, two, three, four. Uh, fifth gateway here, six, seven gateways. Eight gateways in total. We do have Zealot um, movement intercept ability being researched, so of course, more aggression going on here. A lot of Zealots actually, and more beings uh, warped in. So we are going to be seeing a big, big push coming in from the Protoss player right now. It's going to be interesting to see how the Zerg player survives it because, as you can see, his army is not that big. He's been macroing pretty hard, trying to build up that third base while the Protoss has been just preparing to just completely rush down the the uh, pro uh, zerg player so we've charge almost complete um glide re reconstitution is ready for the the uh roaches which makes them run faster both on and off creep uh it's gonna be interesting to see how this goes on there is two immortals here this is gonna be quite dangerous for the zerg player they're gonna be absolutely wrecked now keep in mind that ravagers are not affected by by the extra damage from immortal however immortals do hit pretty hard as it is they hit, hit for 20 and 50 versus uh, armor so there's actually a complete wipeout here from the protoss player he is taking out pretty much everything and he's splitting up just a little bit here you see this f uh, four uh, depths and two zealots gone up here they are probably going to get cleaned up here but this base is in a lot of trouble there's a lot of zealots running around as well as the fact that the two immortals are right behind them you have two um sentries behind them they're not really doing that much of course, uh, Sentry has been particularly useful for the Guardian Shield spell, which is currently not being in use. Um, but let's see how we are progressing here. So as you can see, those Zealots are kind of starting to run out a little bit. But of course, the Zerg units are kind of dwindling at the moment. They are down to two bases effectively. And this is going to really, really hurt the, um, the Zerg player. As you can see, he has lost 22 drones, which is quite a significant number. And he calls GG. Now, that was a quite an aggressive push from the Protoss player as you can see four minutes 44 that's our seven minutes 44 that's pretty much all it took and the reason that happened is because he saw this hatchery before it was complete giving him that knowledge that the zerg is macroing he's not building up a huge force the correct me method was probably to cancel that and just rush out a bunch of units but of course these guys are the pros i'm not going to question their decisions and unfortunately that didn't pay off trying to macro up he was probably hoping for uh, parting two uh, give him a bit of extra time, but unfortunately didn't quite work out. So that's pretty much that for the first game. Thank you guys for watching. If you think this is a good idea and if you are enjoying these replays, please leave it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more. And the buttons for that are going to actually be at in my new outro. Hope you enjoyed that also. Let me know what you think. If you think I should uh, vary the music a little bit on that, please let me know. I will change that up. So thanks for watching, guys. Good luck. Take care. Bye-bye.